Hello, everyone, and welcome back for our fourth speakers this afternoon. Welcome back to the ISBM Big Talk, The Thriving Marketer. And I hope you've been able to join us for the first three, but if you're joining us for the first time, again, welcome in. Each one of these presentations is a separate link, and you've discovered this one. And if you haven't been here before, I'm going to invite you to look at the Q&A tab at the bottom and open that up. If you'd like to ask a question, you can just type that during the talk at any time. And I'll be monitoring those for the presenter and offering them as they come in, if that's appropriate, or saving them to the end. If you have questions or concerns, you have a help button, or you can dial ISBM and we can help you there. So again, I appreciate you all joining us, and I look forward to this next presentation. I think you will enjoy this as well. Um, we have a presentation uh, this afternoon from Amy Haney, and there's Amy. She is the Senior Commercial Procurement uh, Director, and she is 14 years with Abbott Corporation, and you're going to learn a little bit about Abbott during this talk. During her time with the company, Amy has served several roles that span from commercial, including marketing services and travel and procurement, and Amy's talk is going to highlight how she has developed her team over these years to be collaborative in approaches to the marketing space. So I think this is going to be a great talk to explore all the interconnectedness of uh, where marketing goes. She's going to share her personal experiences, and again, I invite you to ask questions during the talk, and I'll offer those or at the end where I hope we'll have a dialogue about her experiences and yours. So Amy, let me turn it over to you. Very good. Thank you, Lynn. I appreciate it. Um, yes, as Lynn mentioned, um, I am currently the Senior Director of Commercial Procurement at Abbott, and I've been with Abbott for 14 years. Um, I intend to make this, inter this presentation a bit more informal and as Lynn mentioned earlier, I would encourage and welcome Q&A throughout the presentation, so please don't be bashful to ask questions. would love to have the interactive dialogue. Um, a little bit about myself um, in terms of my time at Abbott. Um, as mentioned, I've been here 14 years, and all of my time at Abbott has been spent in procurement. And one might wonder, well, why, why procurement? And why not step out into a, you know, into a division or into marketing or into some other area across the company? And the answer to that is I've been so stretched and challenged in the roles that I've had at Abbott in procurement that I, I have grown every day. And so I remain in procurement. I'm passionate about procurement and specifically marketing procurement and how I've had the ability over specifically the last few years to really evolve and change how procurement works with our marketers. So again, just a little bit, um, I've ranged primarily in the indirect space of procurement, ranging from I think nearly all indirect categories, including airlines, meetings and events, fleet, media, creative and digital, PR and sponsorships, market research, commercial services, and so forth. So excited to be here. Um, I currently manage a team both directly and indirectly um, to the tune of, I think, a little over maybe 30 to 35 um, employees across the globe. And Abbott operates in 150 plus countries. And my role today um, does span globally. Um, across the entire commercial portfolio. A little bit about myself personally, um, my hobbies include running, hiking, climbing, traveling, and um, I, am, I am an aunt to almost 40 nieces and nephews. So happy to be here. We'll progress on. Okay. So, what I won't do here for, for today's discussion is I will not launch this video, but I would encourage you all, it's about a, about a two-minute video, and I can give you the, the website. It's www.lifetothefullest.abbott. And I would encourage you to go out and take a look at the video. It really gives a nice brand message that demonstrates how Abbott touches lives from infancy through maturity. So as we think about 
as we think about Abbott procurement and marketing procurement, we are transforming as an organization. And how we go to our customers and how we go to our stakeholders, both internally and our suppliers externally, is changing. And so how do we as procurement stay on message with the company's brand message while also driving our business forward? I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but I would encourage you all, if you have the opportunity, to take a look at this short little two-minute brand message video. It's done, it's done very nicely. Abbott's purpose is to harness and enable power of health to nurture, celebrate, and fulfill the promise of human potential. And our products and services support that. OK. OK, so the next slide, um, again, just a little, a, little bit about, a little bit about Abbott to get us grounded. Um, as you can see here on the screen, and I won't, walk through, I won't walk through all of this, but as we think about you know, the challenges and opportunities, not only across Abbott in all stages of our lives, but also how do we, from a marketing procurement perspective, remain focused on leading and supporting our business to ensure that we're offering the appropriate solutions and options quickly and efficiently. In the, in the day and age that we live today, we are operating in a very rapid environment. And again, from a procurement perspective, we're encouraged to how do we work faster, smarter with our business to ultimately grow and elevate our company. Just high-level overview from a, from a portfolio perspective, um, from a sales perspective. Abbott, um, Abbott, again, is a global company. And from a sales perspective, our, we have various lines of business. And our medical devices business, as an example, represents 27% of our overall sales. Our established products division, 16% of our sales. Diagnostics, 23%. And nutrition, 30% of Abbott sales. So again, when we think about how we, as marketing procurement, work across a, a diverse global company, you can imagine that it's, it's, it's complex. It's complex. It requires skill sets that are unique. And it requires the ability to really partner with and understand our marketing objectives to ultimately help them to be successful and, and have it to be successful as we work to grow our business. Okay, again, here I won't spend too much time on this slide, but um, interestingly, from an Abbott perspective, 65% um, of our sales are now outside the U.S. 58%, as referenced here on the screen, are sales in developed markets and 42% in emerging markets. So again, when, when I think about how do we build and grow our organization from a procurement perspective, to help to enable us to continue to grow and evolve globally, it requires creativity in, in, in how you build your organization. And I'll talk to that in a little bit more detail a little bit later. One of the other things I want to mention on this slide before proceeding, because it is important as we think about how we operate, not only as procurement, but as a company, is we, we healthcare needs are growing, and they're changing around the world. And we need to work to stay ahead of the trends and respond with relevant solutions, both from a procurement perspective, from a marketing perspective, and so forth. So countries like China, India, Russia, and Brazil are growing rapidly with a rise in middle class households. So there's, a there's an increased demand 
for health care in these spaces, and we're living longer as well. So how are we able to reach audiences from, again, infancy to maturity in the products and offerings that, that Abbott provides? And how do we as procurement professionals work with marketing to enable that growth? Okay, so here's where I'm hoping maybe we can have a little bit of interactive dialogue. Um, I, I'll take it back a little bit. If I go back, let's say, three years at Abbott, and I've been with Abbott 14 years, if I go back a few years, we, we, had, a, we had a new CPO in our, in our company. He came to Abbott from, from the outside three years ago. And, and he brought to the company a perspective which, which I attribute to the success that we've had from a marketing procurement standpoint. And I'll explain a little bit about that. Um, again, what he brought to the organization, as you can see on the bottom part of my screen, are the five points of purpose. And I'll quickly run through them and then share a little bit about how those five points of purpose apply across all that we do from, it, from an Abbott procurement perspective. So protect and elevate the brand, create shared value relationships, enhance margin and elevate financial performance, expedite growth and innovation, and design a flexible dynamic supply network. So as we think about those five points of purpose and we think about where we're going as a company, and again, I'll say specifically from a marketing marketing services perspective, for us to continue to be relevant as an organization from a procurement standpoint, we need to be able to foster and grow relationships, not only internally, but externally. So as I've worked to build my staff, as an example, specifically over the last few years, what I have found has been really helpful is bringing in staff that has the ability to be relevant with the marketing community. And that's really important when we think about all the pressures and stresses that we have in our, in our working lives today. And how do, we, how do we work collaboratively and productively with the marketeers to ultimately enable them to want to come to us for support in the work that we provide to them. So again, that relationship part, while we focus on all five points of purpose, the relationship part is really key for us in the marketing space. And then another area where we're really focusing heavily is on, for our own growth and innovation, creativity. So. I'm going to go out on a limb to say that gone are the days from an Abbott procurement perspective where we perform a six to 12 month pitch process or RFP process in the marketing space. That's just not how we're operating anymore. And that's because due in part to the fact that we, to remain relevant, we really need to come up with creative ways to bring solutions to our business customers quicker. If we think about marketing and all the different ways to meet our target audiences and consumers around the globe, it's complex and dynamic. There's mobile, social, digital, the various apps, you have e-commerce and so forth. So how do we adapt from a procurement perspective to be more relevant, again, not only internally but externally. So again, taking it back to the five points of purpose, um, the establishment of these points has really enabled us to show up differently from a procurement standpoint. And I'm excited to share that as a result of us putting into practice some of these activities and behavior changes, we are growing and elevating as an organization. And I think that's viewed both internally and externally. 
and we're and we're proud of that. Another slide here again I won't I won't spend too much time on this one, but again, while while we work to focus on the five points of purpose, we always want to be mindful of the need to protect the brand, to elevate ourselves, to create shared and trusted and valued relationships. Some of these areas that are highlighted in blue are just areas of, of focus over this past year while we're focusing on all these areas. As we think about the environment that Abbott is in today, and I'm imagining many, many of you who may be listening to this presentation, we're in a cost-constrained environment. Um, and I think that, that spans across the industries. So again, how do, we, how do we remain relevant to our marketing clients? How do we bring the spend discipline that is demanded for our own success? And again, I think that's possible through having the right relevant talent who can connect with, with our marketing colleagues. So I'm going to pause there for just a moment and ask if there are any questions or any feedback that you have for me, and then I'll progress to the next slide. So I'll just remind folks that to provide feedback, you can just click open the Q&A tab and start typing. I know that takes a minute or so, and um, so I'm going to suggest maybe, Amy, you can just go forward a bit, and then if you can and uh, we'll wait to see if we get some input back. And I'll let you know okay. when I Okay, very good, that sounds good. Okay, so throughout the presentation here, I've, you know, I've talked a lot about you know, talent and relevant talent, and so I wanna talk a little bit here. I'm not gonna read through all the words on the slide, but I'm gonna keep this a little bit casual and informal, and please feel free to ask questions. So here is a, is a bit of a snapshot of, of how we're organized across Abbott today from a category management perspective. So you'll see in the middle of your screen that we are, we are structured by, by vertical, if you will. So we have a technology category, we have a professional services category, then there's the commercial services category, which is the category that I manage. And then below, I've just laid, laid out some of the spends, um, logistics, manufacturing, packaging ingredients, and dairy. So if we think about, again, the complex, dynamic world that we're living today, and we think about the verticals that are established across our company, again, from a procurement standpoint, what, what's become evident specifically over the past few few years, couple of years, is where we're seeing a blending of services across the verticals. So again, technology. Well, one might ask, well, how do we define technology? And technology touches probably every vertical, probably across every company. And so as I've worked with, with my team specifically over the last couple of years, we've had to do some evolving and changing, and we've had to become more and more nimble to work not only with our client base and with our supply base, but also internally across our organization. And that's really, really critical from my perspective for us as leaders of the organization to understand, to understand the importance of, of having the ability to tap into other expertise across other verticals, ultimately for our mutual success. Okay, so I'll take a little bit of a so step I, back. I, yes? Yeah, I think we had someone that asked a question here, particularly about your slide before where you in, asked for information of, from others. So there's a curiosity if Abbott uses supplier scorecards and if there are ways that suppliers might help shape their scorecard or, or how you implement those. Okay, nope, that's a really good question. So when we think about um, supplier scorecards, again, I'll stay within my area of commercial services. 
Um, supplier scorecards do exist. Um, it sort of depends on the category that we're talking about. Um, if I think about as an example, let's let's take media. We've had for a number of years scorecards and that that exist and and recently we've encompassed a, a 360. So it's a scorecard that not only monitors and provides feedback from the supplier, but also giving the supplier the opportunity to do the same for Abbott. So when we think about how do we partner differently and grow together with our supply base, it's important to have that mutual feedback session. Um, again, out, when we think about scorecards, I, I would say there is some opportunity for improvement depending on the area that we're talking about. But for the most part, our primary key categories, there is a, a, a formalized scoring process in place. Thank you for the question. Have you, sure, I'll just do a follow-on. So have you actually taken action on suppliers based on the scorecard, or is that mostly a, just an improvement process? Yeah, I think that that's a good question. When we say actions, so actions can come in the form of can come in various forms. So, yeah, from the standpoint of actions, if let's say as an example, and again, it depends on the space that we're working, but if I use media as an example, we have um we have had over the years metrics in place whereby if certain criteria is met, there is the ability for the agency to earn incentives. If there are areas of improvement that are needed, there are opportunities for Abbott to receive some form of compensation or consideration. And then there are action plans to help the agency or the supplier to, to get back up to speed or get back up to where they're ratings are more acceptable. Great. And we had two more questions that were based on the, the previous slide. I don't know if you want to go back, but one was that there was a blue highlighted area that said uh, cultivate innovation with exclusivity. Can you expand on that? It's in the fourth yeah, column. I, yeah, I can. So from the standpoint of, um, of, of, of innovation, Again, and I'll stay within the commercial services space for now. Innovation can come in a lot of different ways. I think when we talk about exclusivity, those those areas of opportunity exist across verticals, but exclusivity probably not as not as prevalent in in the marketing space. But as an example, if I say, okay, what what might be deemed innovative? Well. It might be a suggestion on a different way for Abbott to operate either internally within our within our own company or externally with our supply base. So I will not go into a lot of detail there for reasons of confidentiality, but we are encouraged and stretched across our organization to bring greater innovation for probably understandable reasons that we need to differentiate ourselves as a company externally and with all of the different ways in which we exist and where we can be relevant and present from a digital, a social, a mobile, et cetera, perspective, innovation is key to success and growth. So maybe this is a follow-on, but the question then is, um, so uh, if you're in encouraging innovation from your suppliers with some, I guess, um, attachment of an agreement associated with that, do you then have preferential suppliers that you would go to first, or are all suppliers treated equally? Yeah, I think there from – that's a really good question. So if I take a slight step back and I think about – kind of how we operated, I'll say, prior to our transformation as a, as a company and specifically as a, as a department. Um, gone are the days where we, where we spend months and months and months 
through a formalized RFP process where we include everyone who possibly could provide the service and then narrow down that way. Our, our business demands that we work with a supply base that is nimble, that is flexible, and that is willing to grow with Abbott. And so that's where when, when I talked quite a bit about relationships and, you know, sharing valued relationships, that's really important and, and, and that, that changes how we historically operated as a procurement function. So again, a little less about formalized RFPing processes, again, where possible, and more about how do we work differently, I'll say externally as well as internally, to bring and partner differently with our suppliers. And when I say partner differently, I mean you know, our previous approach might have been one where we, very traditional procurement, where you, where you do an RFP, you award business, you establish a contract for a three-year period, as an example, and then when that contract is up, you do it all over again. That's what we're moving away from as an organization, um, if that answers your question. So as, as you move from that, what does the new agreement look like? Is it a shorter term? Is it project by project? Or uh, is it longer term? Yeah, really good question. I think um, where possible, those, those agreements will span longer. And they'll span longer for the purpose of enabling us to work and partner differently with our supply base and where there may be the need to, you know, further develop and grow a supplier with us, we will take the time to do that. Again, it it sort of depends on the the space, the space in which we're working. There are some spaces where if we think about like creativity as an example, there are some business lines and business units that may prefer to do a more rotational approach with the supply base to bring that creativity and innovation and different thinking, differentiated thinking, whereas in some of the other spaces, there's, there's, there's a different perspective on that. Thank okay, you for good. asking. Good question. All right. We'll let you go back to the talk. Okay. Okay. Very good. So I was just mentioning here a little bit, um, just, and this is actually my last slide, so I would encourage if people have been waiting to ask questions, please feel free to do so. Um, again, I think, so again, I want to go back to a few years ago when, when our CPO came, came to Abbott, and he, at the time, I was managing um, one of the categories, it was specifically media, and he gave me the opportunity to oversee the marketing services space. And so we had some discussion, and, and I, I felt pretty strongly that we needed to show up differently to continue to be relevant from a procurement perspective. And so we talked through perspectives around bringing in differentiated talent, and specifically from my point of view, I I thought, why not bring in marketing-specific talent? Why not try to bring in folks from, from marketing? And we can teach them the procurement. And so my boss was, um, was, was agreeable to allow me to take that approach. And so it's been very successful. I've been, I've been bringing in talent that do not necessarily have procurement-specific um, expertise and experience. If they do, great. If they don't, that's okay. And we've been really successful to date with that approach. Again, it's a bit of a brave approach because, again, the traditional procurement organizations, you know, require that. But again, how we're working differently, it's, it's not as much of a, of a need. I think for us, as we've evolved and have become more successful and relevant, we've noticed that having the relevant talent opens doors, and it opens doors 
which then builds trust. And then when you have the trust with your business colleagues, they are more agreeable to have you at the table when you're talking strategy with the leaders across the business. So I'm excited to say that that's, that's where we are today. We still have more work to do, but I think if I had to sum it up, I think what has enabled us to remain, um, again, I'll say relevant and, and, and at the table, is that we have staff across the globe that can relate. And if we're talking specifically marketing, it's staff that can relate to marketing problems and marketing issues and the need for speed um, in, a tr in a traditional procurement um, organization. Commonly, there's a lot of red tape one has to get through. And we still have to do that. We still have to contract. We still have to work through legal. We still have to do all of the crossing the T's and dotting the I's. But we're able to work more quickly and nimbly, in short, because we understand where our marketeers are coming from. So with that, um, that concludes my part of the presentation. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today and would, would welcome any additional questions or commentary. Okay, so we'll open up the uh, Q&A again, please, if you uh, feel free to type in and, and share your thoughts or your questions. Um, I'm curious if, um, if you've been doing this for about three years now, do you have a metric tracking you know, speed or more curiously from my side, it sounds like you've chosen some other attributes for choosing suppliers that are not related to lowest cost. Have you seen cost change over time? Have your spends changed dramatically in becoming more nimble? Uh, I think, so that's a really good question. I think um, I, how I would respond to that would be one of our um, objectives across the, the organization is we really, we really have an opportunity to refine our supply base. And I say refine carefully in that we we have pockets of we have pockets of spend areas where we just have far too many suppliers, far, far, far too many. So when you think about a space that has, let's say as an example, a thousand agencies and you work to rationalize or consolidate that supply base, naturally you're going to realize uh, cost savings opportunities because you're giving the agency or agencies that you're reducing to, you're down to, you're giving them the opportunity for actually more of your business. So we're, we're taking those careful approaches not only within a business line, but also taking a look at those opportunities and how they might exist across the various divisions at Abbott. Now that's not a new approach, but we're taking a more targeted focus there, which is, again, as we think about relationships, it's not only helping Abbott from a P&L perspective, but it's also helping the supply base externally with whom we're growing our business. And that has worked well in, in, in my space on the commercial side to date. So I think we have a lot of folks in the audience who are in marketing and um, probably have appreciated that you live in the world of procuring on, on behalf of marketing. But there's, there's always some conflict. It seems like you guys are trying to address it fairly quick, with quickness, with speed, right, and with understanding. But, you know, when you have these conflicts, how do you address them today versus the way you might have done them in the past? Has that changed? Oh, thank you for the question. Really good question. So I'll give a bit of an example um, of, of how we operated historically. And I use the word we because I was part of that historical operation. So historically it would be, okay, global procurement has, you know, a goal or a financial target that we need to meet. And so therefore we come up with an initiative that we want the divisions to participate in. And the divisions may or may not choose to partake, but we force it upon them. 
and I'm being a, I'm being a little bit dramatic as I'm talking just for 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 context, but this is I this is under common. I'm sorry. I said I think we all understand what you're saying. We do. Okay. Okay. And and so it was here. We're going to do an RFP process, and we're going to do it formally. And then at the end of it, we're going to choose one supplier. Okay. And procurement will lead that process. Procurement will build the criteria, the scorecard, and 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 the goal is to get to one supplier. That's the old way in which we worked. The new way, and I'll say, you know, as of the last several years, is we will work with and pre-align with our marketing stakeholders to say, what what do you need? What are your business objectives? And how can we come together with you, partner with you, and help to guide you to the most right solution, and you, from a marketing perspective, you can decide if you want two agencies or three or if you want five. That's up to you. But what we will bring to you is the expertise and recommendations of agencies and external partners for consideration, and we will help to drive the process in collaboration with you. And that has made a really big difference, I'll say, from my own personal experience. That approach has worked very well across Abbott. Thank you for the question. Any other questions? I think I put everybody to sleep, Lynn. Oh, I'm sorry. I had, I had, uh, my audio had dropped, and I was hoping someone would step in for me. I'm sorry. That's our first <laughs> blip of the day. Um, so I'm sorry that I missed the end of that answer. I, I'm going to field you a second one, though, um, if that's okay. Sure. Can you take an extra? Um, sure. So let's, let's look at it from the flip side, right? So you're living now in this procurement world and trying to help marketing. What's the best thing that the marketing folks could do to help you help them? Thank you for the question. That's a good one. Um, if if I go back three years and and if you ask that question, I would have responded in a way that said, you know, be open minded to our ideas that we bring to you as procurement. If we fast forward to today, it would be continue to engage us early as you have been and that action on the marketer's side actually helps us to bring solutions and results quicker. And we have just seen and experienced, again, in the dynamic world that we live in, we need to be quicker in the work that we do. We need to get to market quicker. Well, how do we do that? If the marketing clients continue to come to us early with their needs, we could help them earlier rather than in the old, I'll say the older way of working procurement, I'll say at Abbott, was viewed more so as a tactical organization that put together a contract and secured a statement of work and helped to get a PO issued. And that's not where we are anymore as an organization. So it's, again, partnering and continuing to partner at the onset. Yep, talking early, early and often. Yeah, here's an interesting one that's come in. Um, so how much technology are you using and what kind of technology? Like, for example, do you have bots that scour the net for lowest prices? Um, or maybe this isn't relevant for your division, but do any other verticals use technology for sourcing? Yeah, I think there I probably would not be in a position where I could speak real specifically to the technology aspect of things. Um, I will say that, and this probably spans across all companies, um, not unique to Abbott, for us to 
continue to remain relevant and, and nimble in the work that we do and how we drive business and growth, we, it, it, it is imperative that we consider technology and stay more on top of technology, whether that's through our sourcing needs, through how we go to market, whatever it might be. The, the technology is at the forefront. Um, do you do you see that the suppliers that you would have worked with in the past, or maybe ones you had never seen, that do they approach you differently now that you have three years of record in the market um, doing business differently? Do they provide different services or come at you differently with different information? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I think I think not unlike Abbott's transformation from a procurement standpoint, I think that just just the industry. I just think companies in general are are going through through transformations. If I think about, as an example, um, agencies and holding companies, how they're working and operating is is changing and evolving daily. So it's it's a combination of of both Abbott and and the way we're transforming, as well as our supply base that's also transforming. Because again, I think the, the the state of the industry, the state of the economy, demands change, um, and I think we're seeing it both internally and externally. Okay. All right, I'll ask the audiences: Are there any further questions? We'll give it a second. Well, I liked that slide. We didn't use it. Okay. The pretty slides, yeah. Well, thank you. I really appreciate I appreciate this opportunity. Um, again, I, I would encourage those of you listening, if you wish to learn a little bit more about Abbott, um, please feel free to go to our website, um, take a view of the video. It's a nice, nicely done video that helps to represent who we are. Um, and again, I really appreciate the opportunity and look forward to future dialogue. Thank you. Thank you, Amy, so much for your time. And uh, so let me go back to the audience and uh, recap the day. So again, thank you, everyone. For those of you that joined us for all four sessions, we're probably going to know who you are by the login. But if you logged in with your colleagues in a group sitting in a conference room, we might not know that you were there. So we would really appreciate if you would let us know if you've attended to um, as a group. Um, one, we'll make sure we provide you with access to all the recordings and uh, any other information that comes out from the event. And we would love to have your direct feedback in a survey. So yeah, I guess I'm promising if you tell us who you are, we're going to send you a survey. But I still hope that you'll let us know that you're there um, just so we can keep track of it. If you know of anyone that was having challenges or difficulties today, please let us know. We'll try to make sure that's rectified before tomorrow. We have four sessions tomorrow, and we do another fellow induction. So just a quick overview. Uh, we'll start the morning session at 9, where I'll do an introduction and remind people about the technology. And then we have a presentation by Paulo Costa that I don't think you're going to want to miss, Delivering Organizational Value. It's fabulous. Um, and then we've got another one at 10.30 on building social selling teams. Um, Amy from Dell, and you're going to want to see that one. Uh, we have an, another ISBM fellow induction following that talk right before the lunch break with Robert Palmatier. Um, in the lunch, after the lunch break, we have the challenge of um, online supply chain management um, coming with a, a pair of uh, Jim and Michelle. And wrapping up for the day, uh, we have Jerry Wind, and you're not going to want to miss that one. Please do block out your afternoon for that, too. So it's a, it's a powerful day tomorrow, and I hope you'll join us. Again, we are all looking forward to your feedback um, on the technology as well as the presentations today as we learn more about using this tool to present. I am, again, very sorry to say that I won't be able to join you for drinks. You can feel free to have one on me in between tonight and tomorrow. Um, I do promise that we'll have continuing our um, meetings in person. Uh, these will not be our only way of getting together, but today we'll miss out on those drinks, and, and actually my team is typing to me. They're all missing that too, so I guess we owe everybody a, a, a 5 o'clock, even though it's early, um, and uh, look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.